Columbus, Ohio, the capital of the strength world for the next three days as we kick off the 2023 Arnold Strongman Classic. Thank you so much for being with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Lawrence Chalet. Kiki Dixon is the third member of our broadcast team. We'll be hearing from her in just a second. But the men's competition this year, Laws, I couldn't be more excited for it because it is wide open. I am extremely excited for this. Like you said, well, firstly, we're guaranteed a new champion this year. We've got 10 athletes here, no former winners. So we're guaranteed a new champion. That's always exciting. But it could be one of the closest battles we've ever seen. Let's take a look at the 10 men who will be competing here over the next two days to be crowned the Arnold Strawman Classic champion. Mitchell Hooper is a man that Laws coaches. Mateusz Kieliszkowski, more on him in a second. First time we're going to see him compete in two years. The American Nightmare, Bobby Thompson, he is also in the field, someone that Laws coaches. And then Pablo Nakanechi, a powerful newcomer. We'll be keeping an eye on him. But Mateusz Kieliszkowski, one of the favorites here. And for more on him, let's go to Kiki Dixon. I spoke with Mateusz, and while he does come across as a very stern and somber individual, make no mistake, he is so excited to be back on the competition floor. He's been working closely with his doctor to get back into this fighting shape, and they say it's a victory for him to be able to compete again. And while I certainly understand those sentiments, I think we all are aware that there is a fierce competitor that lies within Mateusz, and he's had to lie dormant for the last couple of years, and while that competitor is about ready to be unlocked, Thank you, Kiki. Really looking forward to seeing Mateusz Kaliszkowski compete. It has been a while since we have seen him on the competition floor. The Wheel of Pain is event number one. you got to push that thing as far as you can in 60 seconds. It weighs about 20,000 pounds here. Laws, the keys to success are presented by Beyond the Whiteboard. What do you got to do in order to get the best score possible here? such an important event this obviously it's going to lay the foundation for the whole competition but we are talking endurance and leg strength they need to be capable of working hard for the full 60 seconds and that is very very draining we've got some incredible athletes though the likes of tom stoltman and kiliashkovsky both have won this event in the past but tom evans will be the first man out he's a strength coach at the University of Delaware. He played college football at the University of Richmond. And in 2013, he got to live every offensive lineman's dream. The guy caught a two-point conversion in his team's win over Albany. So actually got to catch the football as an offensive lineman. He's used to pushing things around here. and We'll see how he does with the Wheel of Pain. I've been super impressed watching Tom over the last few years, really establishing himself very, very well on the strongman circuit. This is a big step up now, though. So let's see what Tom Evans can do with the Wheel of Pain. And already, he's pushing hard on that implement. This is a good pace already. Now, the key here, as I mentioned earlier, is that he can maintain this for the 60 seconds. You don't want to go too hard at the start and burn all your energy halfway through. 60 seconds is a long time, especially when you're doing an event called the Wheel of Pain. Very excruciating event. Halfway through and Evans is knocked out about 50 feet here and counting, continuing to move. He's going very well here. Starting to slow a little bit, but he's digging deep now. Just coming up to 15 seconds left. Every step that he gets, he knows is important. So hard being the first athlete out on an event like this. The final seconds for Tom Evans. And he's able to gut another couple feet out of that thing. And that's not a bad distance at all there. 84 feet unofficially to start things off for the men. One more look at Tom Evans' effort here. So, Thomas Evans, our first athlete out. He's put in a very solid distance there, approximately 84 feet. Now, if we kind of compare that to, to Tom Stoltman's best at the Rogue Invitational 2021, Tom won with a distance of 89 feet. I, I have a personal 
feeling that doing it indoors is slightly easier, so I'm expecting bigger distances than that. But I think that was a fabulous start there from the rookie, Thomas Evans. Martins Leitzis is the man who holds the world record on this event, and he is with Kiki Dixon. Martins, you are the world record holder for this event. You know better how to win at it than anybody else. So what's the secret to success? Um, well, first of all, you need work capacity. You need to be able to go for a minute without stopping, without slowing down. So all the training has to be done as such. Another thing is footwork. Constantly driving both feet into the ground, not letting one foot be up in the air too long. Not only do you hold the world record for this event, you're also the reigning champ at the Arnold Strongman Classic. How different is it to be on the sidelines this year? Uh, it feels really good to be on the sidelines because, you know, I just needed a break. So to be a fan again, it's wonderful, but I can't help but feel that. Like, while I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh, let me at him. Put me back in. <laughs> Put me in, coach. Now you're taking a break. So what does that look like for you? How long? What's the, uh, you know, process look until you get back into competition? For me, I'm going to um, just take this year off completely. He'll do a lot of uh, YouTube videos. My goal is to do Strength Unknown, which is where I get to travel the world looking for obscure strength feats and just document them. And of course, just heal my body. And then next year, hopefully, stronger than ever. Thanks for joining us, Martin. Thank you for having me. I always love to see the dragon compete. We were talking about that earlier. Your yeah. head understands why he needs a break, but the fan in you wants to see him out there. Absolutely. The coach in me totally gets it. But as a strongman fan, it's always sad not to see Martins compete. He's such a great competitor. Very smart as well. Listening to him there, he kind of really understands these events. And you can tell the way he structures his training. He really is methodical in his approach. He needs that time off, though. He wants to kind of prolong his career. So we understand that. We wish him the best of luck. Our next athlete out will be Pavlo Nekonechny. This guy is a mutant. I can't <laughs> wait to watch him on the deadlift tomorrow. But let's see what his endurance is like. Huge, huge man. Carries so much muscle. Very, very powerful. What's the endurance like? Last time we saw him compete was at the Rogue Invitational. And he was really impressed. There's the raw power that this guy possesses. Yeah. I believe he's the youngest athlete we've got competing as well, only 25 years old. Have you ever seen a man with such wide shoulders? <laughs> His back doubles as screen number three at your local Cineplex. Pablo Nekonechny starting his bid. He's a newbie to the Arnold Strongman Classic. He knows he's got the power. Does he have the skill and the endurance to become the Arnold Strongman champion? He starts his quest with the Wheel of Pain. Looking to track down 90, 80 feet, 8 inches from Tom Evans, who's the first man to go. And Nakanetsi off to a great start here. Yeah, and he looks to be pacing himself well. Nice, short, powerful steps. Good arm positioning, good head positioning. He's got his head down. He's not looking up, not wasting any pressing power. Using what they're trying to do is kind of make sure the bone on bone. So you're trying to use your skeletal system to be in a strong position to allow all the power from those legs to drive into that bar. And this is very good from Nekonechny. He's still working hard. You can see that distance of Thomas Evans, and he's about to go past it. Nekonechny has now moved himself into the lead with 10 seconds remaining. And I'll tell you what, if Nick and Etchley puts in a big performance on this event, people are going to be worried about him. The other athletes will be watching this, thinking this man has turned up in shape. And there's the 60-second caps of Nick and Etchley at 90 feet. So if we look at the best distances we've ever seen from the athletes competing, Kieliszkowski in 2020 went 112 foot. So that's kind of like, you know, the, the numbers we've got to base off. Very good performance there from Nekonechny. And actually, the second furthest distance we've seen from any athlete is 89 foot from Thomas, uh, Tom Stoltman at the Rogue Invitational. So different area to compete on. They still work on the same mats. I have a theory that being on the grass just makes it a little bit harder. A little more give on that. 
I'm looking forward to seeing what Tom can do today, but that was a very, very solid start from Neck and Edge. Now. 40 seconds he went extremely consistent, had a little adjustment that you just saw, but was able to get himself into the lead. Now let's send it down to Kiki Dixon, who is with the first man to go, Tom Evans. Tom, you've got your first event out of the way. This is your first time appearing here at the Arnold Strongman Classic. What's it like? Uh, truly an honorable experience. Uh, you know, you grow up kind of dreaming one day you get on the stage and sometimes that becomes reality. It's a for real moment to take in and uh, I'm extremely honored to be a part of it. Thank you so much. Absolutely, thank you. Hey, Tom Evans with your Second best mark, we still have eight men to go here in the early stages of the opening event for the 2023 Arnold Strongman Classic in front of a capacity crowd here on a Friday, the opening day of this competition. And there is Mateusz Kieliszkowski, who is making his first appearance at the competition in two years, coming back from that injury. Physically, Physically, he's good. good. Mentally is the question now. This is the question, is what state is that mental capacity in? He is without question one of the greatest strength athletes we've ever seen. The last few years he has been plagued with injuries. And I've seen that when he's tried to come back, you've seen the nerves. If he has got past those mental demons and is back to his best, Strongman is going to be exciting. This weekend is going to be exciting. He's won this event before in competition. So this is an important one for him. Even at his best, we know the deadlift always is a, a weakness. Mm -hmm. So he needs big performances in these other four events. And quite frankly, I think he will be trying to win this one. He looks relatively composed. He's, I, I saw him at a contest where he was coming back from an injury before and he was physically shaking. He looks a little bit more composed now. I know his training's gone well for these type of events. He's going to get a huge reaction from the crowd. He's a fan favorite. Looking to win the Arnold Classic for the first time in his career. He's been inside the top four every time he's competed here, and his last appearance was in 2020 when he finished second. 2020, we saw him do 112 foot on this very implement. Can he equal or better that today? Ninety-one feet eleven inches. The score to beat from Pablo Nakanechny. Sixty seconds of pain ahead of him. It's been seventeen months since we last saw him compete. What kind of shape is Mateusz Kieliszkowski in? The Polish Terminator, and he's away. You'd expect a good solid start from him. Judge is trying to move his hand inside. Yeah, the right try, hand is yeah. almost outside the rope. It has to be on that rope portion. That's correct. Every athlete needs to maintain their hands on the rope. They're not allowed to touch the head of the arm. And Mateusz Kieliszkowski is handling this extremely well. 30 seconds remaining. Listen to this crowd respond to this effort from Kieliszkowski. He's it's already passed Evans. He's starting to feel that lactic acid, but he's still pumping those legs one step at a time. How much does he want it? And now he is moving himself into the lead. He's coming to a grind. He's still moving, but it's slowing and slowing. Come on, Kieliszkowski. Five seconds left. He's come to a grinding halt. Goes for the change of technique to get a bit closer. And, and that he manages will be to move time. It. Shaking his head there, he doesn't think it's enough. We've seen him do 112 feet in the past. We will wait for the official distance. Unofficially, 96 feet. We do know he is in the lead, but that adjustment late really helped him get some extra feet there. Yeah, we saw with some of the ladies competing that used that technique just to get a few extra feet once the legs had given up. Started really well. You could see the judge there just telling him to keep that hand inside the rope. Very solid performance. Is it enough to take the win, though? That's the big question. We have some very, very strong men still to come. Now, regardless of the outcome here, 
it's got to feel good for him to just knock the rust off and get back out on the floor. I, I, I can't see him placing low on this event. So, you know, he needs to be back competing, needs to be in the mix, and I think that distance will put him in there. Mateusz Kieliszkowski, your leader with seven men remaining. Let's go back down to the floor. Kiki Dixon is with Jerry Pritchett. Jerry, we just saw Mateusz push the wheel of pain. What did you see performance-wise with his technique? Those short, choppy steps is really seems to be the key to this. Those long strides just take too much out of you. So, you know, by the first quarter of the push, they're, they're wore out. So that short, choppy steps, and then he gained speed as he got going once he got, he got it moving. So I think that's the key, the short, choppy steps. Stay away from those big, long strides at the start and just be patient, and it'll gain speed as you go. You would certainly know because you've pushed this apparatus three different times. And what did you do to train and prepare for the Wheel of Pain? I pushed truck with, you know, adding weight to the truck, dragging tires behind it. I pushed the Conan's wheel and then the circle with the tire hook to it and the sandbag in it. Pushed the yoke in the gym, just use it as a sled. But anything I can think of to push just to make it difficult, because it's just hard to replicate that sand churning in there. So just do everything you can. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks. And Jerry Pritchett mentioned that the sand that is in those tumblers, it's 160 pounds, 72 kilos of sand that is in each one of those tumblers in total. The Wheel of Pain in excess of 20,000 pounds is Mitchell Hooper out of Canada will be the next man up. Yeah, Mitch Hooper, our next athlete. He has no experience of this event before. He is an athlete that, that comes from an endurance background, a former marathon runner. Also highly skilled at golf as well. He's one of those guys that's annoyingly good at everything, but he doesn't have experience on this. He does have a good engine. Let's see if that is useful when it comes to the Wheel of Pain. And he is having a great rookie season. Probably the best rookie season we, we've ever seen from any athlete. He's done. He's, he's been on the podium in almost every single contest that he's done. And that's one of the, the testimonies to why he's so consistent. He's good at everything. Maybe not the best at anything, but he tends to not drop points. Very similar to the likes of uh, Martins Lissis. And this is the first competition that he's really gotten solid training in heading into in his career. Yeah, definitely. Last year was all about putting his name out there, trying to kind of prove he's one of the best. This year he wants to step up and win some of the major competitions. 100 foot is the target set by Mateusz Kieliszkowski. Let's see what the Canadian athlete can do. Now you mentioned he doesn't have experience with this. What would be a solid finish for him in this? So hard to say. He, in his head, he will be wanting to win this event. He, he believes he's the most conditioned athlete out there. But until you actually try that implement, you just don't know. There'll be nerves there for sure. First time competing at the Arnold Strongman Classic. He's off to a good start. Like we say with every single athlete, it doesn't matter about the start, it matters that you can continually push and drive and keep going for the full 60 seconds. Well, Hooper is moving extremely well here. 20 seconds now down. He's extremely well conditioned, particularly for such a large man. His endurance is, is very good, his fitness levels. Very, very good. He lacks experience compared to some of the other athletes, but he's learning all the time. Past the halfway point. And Hooper oh, taking a quick break. To struggle. That was a big mistake there to actually allow this implement to stop. You can see Thomas Evans' first target to beat, and he's having to change his positioning, and this is harder than he would like. He's still digging deep. He has moved into third place past Evans. Final seconds here for Hooper. Here we go. And it looks like it's going to be good enough we for will, second right now unofficially, but we do need to check that. We will have to that. check those distances. But yeah, a bit of a mistake there, I think, from Mitch Hooper. He kind of he was going nicely, then he started to look up and try and, I think he was looking for the targets, thinking they're not coming as quick as I'd like them to. <laughs> and to be fair, every single athlete so far has put in a huge distance. Really, ideally, what you want to see. So, from this was good. Mitchell this is good positioning here. He's working hard. And then, for some reason, he just stops. Round about here. There we go. 
maybe just the legs were just blowing up too much. He felt he needed to take that little break. But really, when you're doing an event like this where you've only got 60 seconds, you're not going to recover. You need to push to the very final second. And the standard this year is a little different than it has been in the past. You have to have two hands on it at the whole all time. When this implement was first introduced in 2019, it was move it however you could. And we saw, you know, Martin Lietzies and Half Thor, the two guys who were one and two in that event, they actually got their shoulders on it and yeah. were driving it that way. Yeah, they've changed the rules so that you always have to continually push forwards. You can't turn your body around or go underneath the bar. 20,000 pounds of the wheel of pain. It's you know, 21 feet tall. It took three months to design and manufacture, and they really paid close attention to the detail on this thing to make it look as close as they possibly could to the one in the movie Conan the Barbarian. Let's go down to uh, Kiki Dixon, who is with Mateusz Kieliszkowski. Mateusz, welcome back to the competition floor. What's it like to be under the bright lights of the Arnold Strongman Classic again? Oh, hello, hello. Um, I'm really, really nervous because I haven't competed almost two years. And firstly, uh, I have to find, fight with my mind more than with my rivals. But I will try, I will, I will do my the best. I hope no one will beat me in this, in this event and I will get good points. Are you happy with your performance on the Wheel of Pain? Uh, maybe not, not so much because two years ago I had better results. But we'll see, everything can happen. Maybe no one beat me and I will be first. I hope, I hope. Thank you, Mateusz. Thank you. Well, right now, Mateusz Kieliszkowski with the top arc as Kevin Ferris is set to take the floor. So interesting listening to Kieliszkowski. He's so competitive against himself. You know, he, he always wants to be better than he's been in the past. But this is a different competition and so far, 100 foot has put himself into the lead. Kevin Ferris, our next athlete. First time competing here at the Arnold Classic out of American Fork, Utah. We always see him in, in record breaker events do very well in the grip stuff. Unbelievable grip. I'm going to look forward to watching him on the frame carry tomorrow. This one is an unknown once again for Kevin. Be interesting to see how he does. One of the lighter athletes, but fit and strong. Let's see if it suits him. Yeah, listed at 286 pounds, 130 kilos. Six foot two. And he will be the fifth man to take on the Wheel of Pain. One hundred feet eight inches from the Taylor's Kieliszkowski is the top mark. Here goes Kevin Ferris. You look at all those distances we've seen so far. Eighty foot would have been the third best we've ever seen from any of these athletes in the past. So the athletes are getting better the more they practice these events, which is expected. It's a new one for Kevin, but he's moving well. Great positioning once again. Good, powerful drives with every foot. Martins listens. We're talking about how important it is to keep applying that power with every single step. Coming up to 20 seconds left, and Kevin is still working hard. And Ferris is starting to creep up on Tom Evans with 15 seconds to go. Now, I can promise you those legs are on fire right now. The lungs are burning, but it's the legs that build up with that lactic acid. It feels like they want to explode. They want to rip open. And it's, it's an excruciatingly, excruciatingly painful feeling. Unless you've ever done something like this, you just cannot comprehend what it feels like. Now Kevin Ferris is going to come up short of catching anybody inside the top four. So right now his... Score will be good enough for fifth place with five men remaining, unofficially 66 feet. And again, like he looked so good early on, but it's just they, he didn't quite have the endurance to keep pushing. Technique on point. Technique was good. Positioning is good. Getting good power into each drive, just burnt up too much energy. 
Let's go down to the competition floor, back to Kiki Dixon. Mitch, you have conquered an incredible amount of feats, right? Marathons, the golf, strongmen. Where does the wheel of pain stack up in difficulty against all of those other things? Well, I think you have to dissociate difficult and complicated. It's the least complicated thing in the world, but it's, uh, it's heavier than I thought it would be. I think I should have worn my mountain climbing shoes. I'm kicking myself for that, but that's something uh, Coach Laz and I will uh, we'll work on moving forward. But conditioning's there, and I think if I had rock climbing shoes, I think I could have got well closer past Mateusz, but that's just part of doing this stuff for the first time. Speaking of doing it for the first time, your first appearance at the Arnold Strongman Classic, what's that like? It's cool. Like The, the best part is that people who aren't fans of Strongman stumble upon it. And that's sort of the best thing we can ask for. If we want bigger crowds, we want more money, we want more exposure, this is the place to do it, entertain people and show them what the sport's about. Well, we have definitely been entertained. Thank you, Mitch. Good. Thanks, Kiki. Five men down, five remaining, and Tom Stoltman is going to be up next. So this is someone I've been looking forward to seeing back competing. The two-time World's Strongest Man winner. He's had a little bit of a break. Training videos have not looked the best, but Tom Stoltman is a phenom. He's just incredibly genetically gifted when it comes to the strongman world, and he's won this type of event before. I'm excited to see how he can do. Let's see what kind of shape Tom Stoltman is in. Finished seventh at the 2022 Arnold Classic and looking to improve on that here. And you're not going to win it today. Oh, no. But you do not want to start in a deep hole. Tom, anything other than top three will be a, a big disappointment for Tom. He is more than capable of winning this type of event. And as I said, you know, we can kind of look at the training videos. We can criticize. It doesn't matter what you've done leading up. It matters what you do today. We saw in the women's competition athletes that look good suddenly not perform on the day. Tom knows how to win. He's a two-time winner of the World's Strongest Man. He was second at the Rogue Invitational, where he won this event. Let's see what he can do. First event of the Arnold Strongman Classic 2023. Tom Stoltman looking for a strong start to the competition. The first of five events that these men will face. The first of two that they will face on the opening day of this competition. His brother Luke also competing here. In fact, he and his brother Luke are the only brothers to ever make the World's Strongest Man finals. Yeah, absolutely incredible to have two brothers from the same family in a contest like the Arnold Strongman Classic or the Rogue Invitation or the World's Strongest Man. Truly two athletes that from the highlands of Scotland have inspired so many people. Let's see if Tom Solman can track down Mateusz Kieliskowski's mark of 100 feet, 9 inches. Tom has all the tools. He's strong. He's big. He's got a big body weight. He's got the height. Let's see, the only question mark people have kind of said, looking at his training, he's looking almost too big. When I saw him this, this morning at breakfast, he was looking fitter than I saw him a few weeks ago back in his training. So he's obviously been working hard. More than halfway through his 62nd time here. And he's coming up to our first targets. Kevin Ferris is the man whose well, name like is there first. And now, now he's he past he Evans past as well. Kevin. He needs to dig deep. He's got eight seconds. Needs to push. Going past people, but it's getting harder and harder. I don't think he's going to get ahead of the likes of Kieliszkowski. Can he get ahead of Mitch Hooper? So close there, not quite enough. It looks like he may have gotten close to passing Nakanechi. We'll have to check on that, but he was right there with Tom Stoltman. Some very close distances coming up right now. And, and I think we could see that for the whole of this competition. Seven or eight athletes that are all going to be battling on every single event. Well, judging where they're putting his nameplate, it does not look like Tom Stoltman was able to punch into the top three. So if he's not in the top three there, that's bad for Tom. He would have needed a top three finish on this type of event. This event is built for Tom Stoltman. 
maybe just not back to his best like he would have been hoping for. It's hard to have those breaks and get yourself back to your best for every single show. Stolman passes Ferris there, then he gets past Evans, but this is where he really started to slow. Yeah, th th those last 10 seconds are excruciatingly hard. To send it to Kiki Dixon, who is with Kevin Ferris. Kevin, you just finished your first event at the Arnold Strongman Classic. What are you looking to get out of this weekend? Uh, just stay healthy and push through. I, it's, it's my first time here, and uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've set the, the standard high for myself this weekend and uh, looking to make capitalize on a lot of these events. This isn't what I wanted on the on the Wheel of Pain, but uh, for the first time and weighing the lightest, it's, uh, <laughs> it was a fight. Now, you didn't love this event, but which ones are you looking forward to the most? Uh, deadlift and uh, the uh, frame carry. Frame carry will be, will be bread and butter right there. We'll keep our eye out for you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Kevin Ferris put forth a good effort, but sometimes you just can't beat the laws of physics. Yeah, lightest athlete. He's, he's always going to struggle on that type of event, but he put in a great performance. And like he said there, he's looking forward to deadlift, but particularly the frame carry. I'm looking forward to watching him on that one. Well, Rob Kearney will be up next in front of this packed house, the opening day of the 2023 Arnold Strongman Classic. Kearney had a great start to this competition last year, the leader after day one. Day one was unbelievable for Rob last year. Incredible squat. He's great at most overhead type events, dumbbell last year. This is a little bit different, but, you know, he's put 78 foot on this event before at the Rogue Invitational. He said training has kind of really hit correctly. He's got everything right at the right time. So now he needs to perform. Another one of the smaller athletes, but we know from last year watching him, he's got powerful legs. All comes down to that endurance. Has some experience with this implement as well. I'm not sure sometimes if the experience on this, in terms of you know how hard it's going to be. <laughs> <Sometimes> <laughs> when you've never done it before, it you worse. just get on with it. But when you know how painful it is, that sometimes kind of creeps in. But yeah, he's got the experience. He's a great athlete. He says training has gone well. Let's see what kind of shape Rob Kearney is in this year. Now usually Rob will dye his mohawk. Yeah, he's, he's changed it up a little bit this year, gone with the, the beard. Rob Kearney is off. So he's underway. So as I said earlier, 78 foot. Rob Kearney did at the Rogue Invitational in 2021. That has to be his target to be. In his head, he's thinking, I need to improve on that. Come on, Rob. Drive hard with every step. He's pushing. He's in a good position. Less than 30 seconds to go. Arms nicely locked out, head through. He's got 20 seconds. This is where it's burning. Dig deep now. Come on. You just see it. He's slowing and slowing. You've got to keep pushing. Keep that moving. Final seconds for Rob Kearney. How close can he get? And Kearney is... 66, I believe. Not able to track down any of the men who went before him. So 66 feet unofficially for Rob Kearney for seventh. Now three men remaining here. So did not improve on his prior mark. So techni technically really good, nice positioning. It's just hard, <laughs> you know. I, it's so easy for me to stand here and say they should do this or they should do that, but those legs, when they are blowing up, the muscles just stop working, and 
unfortunately for Rob, you know, all the other athletes have put in a huge distance. Well, Rob Kearney will have a little bit of a hole to dig out of after the opening event, but still has plenty of time to do it. Let's send it down to Kiki Dixon, who is with Tom Stoltman. Tom, last time you competed at the Arnold Strongman Classic, you had done several events prior to that. This year, it seems like you had a little bit of different strategy. What was your approach for the competition? Uh, yeah, after Worlds last year, I took six months off, and I just wanted to start with a bang of the year and do the Arnold Classic and just enjoy myself, you know, sharpen some tools for Worlds. And that's all I did. There's no tactics to it. I just, my body wasn't ready for the comps earlier on in the year, so I just wanted to get myself ready for this. Talking about getting ready for the Wheel of Pain, you've had the opportunity to push this implement before. How helpful was that to have that history to draw on? Yeah, I mean, it's a brutal event. Last time I won it, but this year, you know, I think taking some time off is maybe cost me. I was trying to do, I was trying to pace myself and I forgot about the time limit, but you know, it's still fourth place, still a long time to go, a long, four more events to go, sorry, and uh, yeah, it's all, all anyone's to play for, so. Thanks for joining us. Cheers, thank you. From one Stoltman to the next, Luke Stoltman will be the next man to tackle the wheel of pain. Opening event here, the 2023 Arnold Strawman Classic. And I have to say, if we're just basing things off training videos, uh, Luke has looked very, very good recently in his training. Both of them had some time off, but Luke seems to have responded a little bit quicker in terms of getting back to his best. Looking forward to seeing him on the log later on today. That's something he'll really want to try and win. He's done this event before. He's been training hard on it. Let's see how the Highland Oak does in event number one. 370 pounds, 168 kilos is the weight Luke Stoltman comes in at. Third place at last year's Arnold's. Do Tom and Luke train together? They are built a little bit differently. Does, how does yeah. that affect their training together? They're, they're both different physiques. So, you know, mechanically, certain lifters are, uh, have an advantage. Like, we know how great Luke is when it comes to pressing. He has shorter leverages in terms of the arm, so pressing comes more natural to him. Deadlift comes a bit more natural to, to Tom. But there's always strengths and weaknesses, and, you know, between them, they would make a formidable force. Quite strange to see two brothers in such different shapes as well, but what a legendary strength family they already are. They've got another brother as well, Harry, who's getting stronger all the time. So who knows, we may see three Stoltmans at a competition in the future. Luke Stoltman, he's got powerful legs. Didn't perform as well as I expected on the squat last year, but those legs are huge. Let's see how the endurance is keep mentioning it because it's so vitally important they can start off great at this phase but once we hit that 40 second marker that's when it hurts and that's when they need to push and dig that little bit deeper want it more than the next guy that's what it all comes down to so far Kiliszkowski's distance of 100 foot is still our leading time our target to beat Luke is looking steady here Nothing blistering, but he's still moving well, approaching that 40-second mark. Just ever so slightly slowing down, but he goes past Rob Kearney. Needs to push. Legs are, built, are blowing up. And that's not where he wants to be, but the change of tactics have helped. He's still moving. He has about five seconds now, and he's starting to goes past Kevin. track people down. And he goes past Tom Evans as well. That's a bit of a distance now. Is it worth that energy? It did look like he was able to get past Evans, but we'll have to wait for the official score on that. So Luke Stoltman hoping he did enough to get himself into fifth place, but we will again await the official score. Luke has such big, huge legs, and that, that sometimes can be a factor with endurance. They blow up quickly when there's that much muscle mass. An interesting factor when it comes to events like the Wheel of Pain is how much they will impact the next event. 
The log lift. Now, Luke and I would say Bobby Thompson are two of the strongest when it comes to shoulder power. Some of the other athletes require a lot more leg power when it comes to the log. So it's going to be interesting to see how things like the log and the deadlift are affected by the, the fatigue factor that this may cause as we move forwards. And there really are two parts of this event. There's the first 40 seconds, and then there's that last 20 seconds. You see it with every athlete. You know, we're starting off well, they're moving well. Suddenly, it gets to that 40-second marker, and they are they look, those legs are screaming at them. Luke Stoltman is done with his effort. Let's send it to Keke Dixon, who's with Rob Kearney. Rob, the wheel of pain looks like it takes a lot of effort. However, what you've done with your beard seems like it took a lot of effort too. How much time and energy went into that? This took uh, about four and a half hours from start to finish to get it to look like this. So a lot of time and dedication, but you know, beauty is pain. <laughs> wheel of pain, love it or hate it. You know, uh, it's, it's both. You know, this was an event I've done pretty well in the past. These guys are just really big and really strong. This performance today was a PR for me on this event, so I can't be mad about that, even though we you are know, currently in last place. But still, like, looking on the bright side, PR in this event, I can't be mad at that. Thank you. Thanks, Kiki. And Bobby Thompson, the American Nightmare, will be up next. Bobby looking very focused there. This is an important event for Bobby. He loves deadlifting, he loves the log. He's going to need a big performance on this one. He finished third at the Arnold Classic last year. One interesting factor with, with all our athletes this weekend is most of them have events they excel at and most have one or two weaknesses as well. So it's how they can kind of perform on those weaker events that could be the, the deciding factor when we go into the last event tomorrow. Big advantage when you get to go towards the end. And one of the reasons I say it's a big advantage, he may look at the likes of Kiliuszkowski and say, I can't touch that. But he might be looking at like the, the 80 foot of Thomas Evans, thinking, OK, that's possible. I need to focus on beating that. You know, this crowd, this setting, this event, you're just standing back there, you're getting all hyped up, you get out here. How do you best manage the nerves here? Experience is the, the best way, really. Putting yourself in that situation, trying to focus on your own job. That's all you can control. You have no control over other factors, no control over what other athletes do. You just need to focus on yourself. And it's so much easier to do that when you are one of the later athletes to go. When you're one of the first, it's much, much harder because those nerves kick in and you just think, I've just got to keep pushing, I've just got to keep pushing because you're panicking. Whereas now you can think, OK, that's possible. I can pace myself a little bit more and potentially save energy for later on in the contest. Here goes Bobby Thompson trying to track down Mateusz Kieliszkowski's top mark of 100 feet, 8 inches. Good, solid short steps there by Bobby. It's key that he keeps this going, though. He needs to keep pushing for the full 60 seconds. Bobby has a fused ankle, which causes him a little bit of issue on these type of events. He's got plenty of power in those legs, extremely strong in the shoulders. He's halfway through, he needs to dig deep. Now 20 seconds, and this is where we really start to see the fatigue set in. And as and I say that, those legs he takes a break. Up. Digging Thompson deep there just still, he's working hard. Trying to gut he just anything knows he there's can nothing out of that. Left. And that'll do it for Bobby Thompson. He'll be back for some better events as the contest goes on. Not the start he would have wanted, but with some of those limiting factors, you have to just try and dig in, do your best, and, and hope that some of the athletes are off. Unfortunately for him today, you know, we've got some great distances. But the log press is coming up later today, and that is where he can make up a ton of points. Yes, definitely. So you can see those ankles don't work normally. <laughs> He's limited in how he can flex the ankle and reduces the ability to drive as hard as you'd normally like to.
But just one athlete remains. Luke Stoltman has already gone, and he is with Kiki Dixon. Luke, you've got about a decade of strongman experience yeah. under your belt. How valuable is that coming into something like the Arnold Strongman Classic? I don't know how valuable it is. Uh, I think it's just taught me to enjoy strongman. And um, yeah, I've missed, I've missed competing. And to be back here, man, that's, that's what a decade of a strongman tells me, is that I'm supposed to be doing this, and it makes me so happy. Do you still get nervous ahead of a competition, or is it another day at the office for you? I wouldn't say nervous, I just excite, excited, really excited. I was almost in tears looking at all the crowd. Um, I mean, it's amazing, I just, just love it. So do we, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Trey Mitchell will be the 10th and final man out on the competition floor. And he was really impressive the last time we saw him compete back in October at the Rogue Invitation. Trey is always such a, a pleasure to watch. He's, he's had a, he had a great year last year, finishing second at the Rogue Invitational. He won the Shaw Classic earlier in the year. He's always a threat in any major competition. And I think he could do well on this one. This could be a good start for him. And if he can get into that top three, he's going to be a big, big problem this weekend. 17 prior international contests. He's won three of them. So there's the target. Kiliuszkowski still in the lead. Can Trey Mitchell take first place on the Wheel of Pain? Well, when asked about his favorite and least favorite events, loves the stones, not a big fan of the Conan wheel. No, but this is different to the Conan's wheel. Conan's wheel, the weight rests on the chest of an athlete and it's kind of hard to breathe. Whereas this suits him more, he can kind of lock those big strong arms out, use those ridiculously strong legs, use that big body weight as well, it's an advantage. Interesting, looking at the results so far, he's got to be thinking first target, be the number one American. You can just see the detail that this implement was crafted with. They spent a lot of time making sure it looks as close as possible to the one that is in the Conan the Barbarian movie. And the biggest difference is just the height. They couldn't make it as tall as the one in the movie because they couldn't fit it in the building. <laughs> <laughs> Not the easiest implement to move around. Huh? Weighs in excess of 20,000 pounds, and Trey Mitchell has 60 seconds to move it as far as he can. A final athlete, Trey Mitchell. It's always so exciting, waiting for that first event, seeing what kind of shape athletes turn up in. Let's see what shape Trey is in. Nice. Trey off to a solid really start well here. here. He's got the, the wide barefoot style shoes on good for people with, with bigger wider feet they don't constrict your feet at all so you can really kind of spread the the toes out maximum power through each digit in the foot look at this he's pushing Already past hard. Bobby Thompson Halfway and he's through. now just hit the 30 second mark if Trey can keep this up he has a chance of going into first place he's got lots of names to go past now and he's going oh what's happened there 40 Trey second mark he comes to a stop and he is back at it and that's was that cramp or possible injury he's moving well again so I'm just thinking it's just fatigue but the final five seconds and Mitchell is already in fifth place you know, he was going so well then I was expecting to challenge for those top three positions we'll see where he winds up right now his score listed at 90 feet unofficially which is 90 feet is solid and he's Going to be, it looks like, second place. Mitchell Hooper is the man that his nameplate was on the bottom there. And Trey is ahead of that. So unofficially, maybe second place now well, for Trey Mitchell. Great result. Do you know what? Potentially could have been first then as well. It was a strange stop halfway through, as if the legs maybe just blew up completely. But then he was like, I need to dig deep. I'm at the Arnold Strongman Classic, and I'm here to win. Trey Mitchell moving so, so well. 
I actually thought maybe he got cramp or hurt himself when he suddenly stopped. But he managed to get it moving pretty quickly again. There we go. You see that? It stopped for a few seconds. And that was right at that 40 second mark. Yeah. Maybe that was tactics. Maybe he was kind of thinking, OK, just get a breath in. Let's see where he finishes here. He definitely got that second place. So nine points for Trey Mitchell Great as he stuff. will take second place in the event. It's a triumphant return for Mateusz Kieliszkowski. He's going to pick up the event win, and he will earn 10 points. And it's going to be Mitchell Hooper who finishes in third. Pablo Nakanechny in his first run here at the Arnold Classic finished fourth, and then the Stolman brothers back to back in fifth and sixth. Let's go to Kiki Dixon, who is with your event winner. Mateusz, you had to sit on the sidelines for a couple of years due to injury. How difficult was that? Oh, I was really, really sad, disappointed, and frustrated because I haven't competed with this competition. Mm, I know last year events was perfect for me and I could do it easy but uh, one week before competition I got injured uh, and I pulled out from this competition and it was a really bad time for me. I'm sure. Now you are back in action. You're starting the Arnold Strongman Classic with an event win. You talked about the mentality of the situation. What does that do for your confidence? Uh, I try to fight with my mind now because uh, I don't fight with my uh, with rivals because I am returned and I have to give 100 percent and I try doing uh, like the, my training uh, result. I'm not happy from this because last time I did better so it's time to return to gym and improve. <laughs> Well, you still took an event win. I know, though, you're always hungry and always chasing those event records and everything along that comes with this Arnold Strongman Classic. Congratulations, though, on your event win. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Arnold Schwarzenegger's Terminator said he'd be back. Mateusz Kieliszkowski, the Polish Terminator, is back. It's so good to see him back. And he's someone that's still disappointed, even though he won the event. Shows the type of athlete he is. but. How good is it to see Kieliszkowski winning events once again at the Arnold Strongman Classic? They're trying to win the Arnold for his first time in his career, and he is off to a great start. Ten points after the event win. Trey Mitchell and Mitchell Hooper in second and third, followed by Nakanechi and then the Stolman brothers. So one event down here at the 2023 Arnold Strongman Classic. We're going to take a break, but stay with us. The Rogue Iron Game coming up next.